Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today on your average roofer, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install your roof vents. Uh, you're going to need some basic tools. You're going to need a pry bar for pulling out nails, your hammer, and your knife for cutting the shingles. Let's get right into the video. actual box vents um, usually you're about a foot down from the top of the ridge so for most roofers we kind of guess off our hammer uh, most framers would measure it out chalk their lines and then cut their squares out but for this instance we're just gonna go off these two second and third row from the top which is usually where it lands on your roof so what we're gonna do is our vents gonna lay like that so we're gonna pull our vent down to the row below and we can see where our cuts need to be and we're going to take our knife and we're going to mark it like so if you zoom in there you can see where i marked the shingle one there and we're just going to lightly move the vent over about a quarter of an inch that leaves a little bit of gapping on the sides of the vent so your shingles aren't pushing up tight against the plastic and we're going to do the same thing on the other side like so and then we're going to come from these lines up to the top of this shingle the second and third row from the top you're going to go straight up off of that find where you're going to cut in and cut that straight down so now that we've got to our second side we're going to go ahead cut the same line out make sure when you're cutting through your shingles you're going to go once but that only cut this shingle and the face of this shingle. You still have to cut the top of this shingle below this. So you're going to want to go over it again, pushing very firmly down onto the roof deck, making sure you're getting all the way under. You'll feel the plywood with the tip of your knife. Once you got it out, you're going to go ahead. Don't worry if you rip shingles here, just don't rip them on the outsides. You're gonna get underneath. These are gap shingles, by the way, so the tar line is super adhesive, so it's very hard to lift up. That's why you can see I'm actually ripping the shingles. Because these shingles have been on here for a few months now, so. Apparently <laughs> they're not gonna come off, though. No. That's gas quality right there. Tar line's not letting go. Anyways, now that you got that cut, you got this released. You can see here I didn't cut all the way through at the double laminate line. So just give that another pull. There may be, there may be a nail there as well. There is. So we're gonna go under there with our pry bar and pull that nail out. And that's it for nails there. So now you have these shingles loose. You're gonna go ahead and cut straight across the double laminate line where this exposure meets this one. Cut straight across there. Again, doing it a couple times, making sure you're getting all the way through. I didn't get all the way through, so. Go ahead and cut it again. Make sure you get all this stuff out of your way. And as you can see, this shingle now has the backing still in your way. So you're gonna cut that out. Usually your box vent will be about an eight by eight or 10 by 10 inch square. So you wouldn't have to cut all the way to where these lines are. You're gonna have about that much and that much width on your actual vent hole. So you can cut it to where your actual vent hole lands. This is where your vent would be. This one doesn't actually have one cut in, but just for example purposes, I will cut out the tar paper so you can see where it would be. 
making sure to get it all out of your way. That way you're not restricting any airflow on your vent. Make sure you clean up all your waste. And then now that you're here, there may be nails under here as well. So if you try to lift up, you can see there is actually one nail right in this area. So you're gonna take your pry bar, get all the way under, pop it down, and pry that nail up, trying not to damage the shingle as much as possible. It does happen, and if you do damage that shingle, then you will have to replace it. So you get that nail out of your way, and as you can see, there's one more nail right here. Getting it out of your way check make sure there's no more nails you may have some here like this one that is in your way and if you check this side you can see there's actually no nails in my way so we got to get this open by ripping back the car this one as well again try not to damage shingles Usually you'd like to do this while you're installing your roof, not afterwards, but. Now you can see the adhesive has lifted, lifted and one more nail. That would be in my way. Pull that out of there. So now that you have your shingles cut, your tar lines released, you're gonna take your box vent here and it should slide right into place, making sure you're not catching anything at the top, making sure you're not pushing too many shingles out of the way. All right, now you got your vent into place. That's where your vent's going to sit. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna put four nails in the bottom. I recommend using grommeted screws because if you use nails, you have to put caulking on the head of the nail and that will only last about three to five years and you have to either re-caulk them. If you don't, it's a potential leak. So I use grommeted screws, self-sealing grommeted screws that we use for metal roofing. Um, but once you have your nails or screws in the bottom, you're gonna go ahead, lift these tabs and nail underneath the vent or underneath the shingles onto the vent as well and always try to stay outside of this rain line keep your nails back that far from the vent that prevents any water tracking its way into your vent okay so when it comes to putting in a kitchen vent dryer vent uh furnace vent whatever you want to use this for um it's generally the same concept the only difference is when you're installing one of these it's typically lower on the roof than your regular box vent um, but this one can land almost anywhere on a shingle. So this one varies. You can't really just go off the top of the shingle line. This one may land here. It may land here, may land here. It depends where it's gonna land on your exposure to where you actually have to cut this in. So for this instance, we're gonna mark out a spot here. That little circle there, it's probably hard to tell on camera, but there is a circle on the roof now that is going to be the spot where i put this vent in so it's going to land right there and as you can see the nail strip of this this shingle is here so there may be nails in my way up here i'm not cutting straight onto the other shingle exposure line so what you have to do for this one is this one i want it underneath this shingle and underneath this shingle so i have to drop all the way down to here Again, doing the same technique where I mark, slightly move it over and mark my shingle again. Move my vent out of the way. Oh, sorry. Before I move my vent out of the way, I'm gonna go on to where it was, find the height of the back and add about a quarter of an inch. 
and I'm gonna mark that as well. The reason I'm doing that is like I said, it will not actually land on this line. So you're gonna go ahead off the height of that line you just marked. Cut your shingles again and then cut your top line. It's generally the same concept as doing your box vent. The only difference is you're not gonna be cutting right direct on a shingle line. You're, you're gonna land in between shingles. So it makes it a little more difficult, but it's not too hard. Um, anybody can do this. So you can see I got two nails here and there's a nail here, but it will be back far enough out of my way. And we're gonna lift this one. Again, make sure you get those nails completely out of your way. And this is where that circle was. So you would have to cut out, most people like to go around to where their actual penetration of the vent is coming out. Usually this is like a bathroom vent kind of thing off your fan. So you'd cut out that circle and that's where my vent's gonna land. Now, same concept as the other vent. You make sure your tar comes up, vent slides in, like so. Make sure it sits down flat. And then this one, it recommends two nails. It has two slots for nails. We always put three because over time, this will start to curl up in the sun. So you put one nail, and two on the sides, so three nails in total. And then again, you're gonna lift these shingles, nail under here. And uh, some guys for extra precaution will take uh, a bead of caulking and run caulking on the inside and across the back because this is a penetration on your roof and an area that can cause leaks. So uh, caulking is um, an option that people opt out to use. We just nail them or screw them with grommeted screws so we don't have to rely on caulking on our nails and we nail underneath these shingles on the nail lines. Again, making sure our nails are behind the water flow channel. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video on how to install vents on your roof. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment down below. Anyways, guys, until next time, remember, you don't have to be the best. It's all right to be average.